that arguably uh, the lineup from the Japanese players should have been able to counteract. But we'll have to see when we get there. I don't want to call this over too early because there is, of course, the potential for Possessi to get the huge upset and take the win here. Maybe it comes in the form of Vulgin in his starting hand. Right. And a Scorpid. Mm hmm Kept for Possessi, so now if there's Rattlegore or Troublemaker drawn, that just spells out a pretty good curve for Possessi. Not what you want to see, though, the Barrel. That could even just be thrown down on its own if Possessi gets a Troublemaker or Rattlegore in the near future to clear the path for Vulgin to pull out one of those cards by swapping it with Scorpid. I swear every time we see them bank, Yugi's lighting gets brighter and Possessi's gets darker. He's just going to be in <laughs> full shadow. Like, uh, he's going to go uh, full x blies where he's just playing from the void uh, later on, uh, even and if that's not Yugi's quite Yugi's going to go full Casey and ascend into <laughs> unknown heights. <laughs> yeah, cast apotheosis on himself and become deific. Okay, well, we can already see Bank Yugi's in a good spot just by having Rattlegore. It's not coming down for another seven turns, but being oh, able yeah. to play it as soon as possible is premium in the matchup. Also doesn't see any value to playing athletic studies when he could just fit in armor here and there. And armor is essentially um, a buffer for value in this matchup because if you do get to a high enough armor total as Bank Yugi did yesterday, it doesn't matter if you can't even clear the Rattlegore on the other side because Possessi will be too deep in fatigue theoretically. Uh, honestly, looking at the anchor man here, I think the others don't really do anything. And uh, even though card draw is not especially important for Bank Yugi, uh, you could definitely argue that he needs it to, uh, or it might help him at the very least, to overcome the one possible speed bump, which is the development of the troublemakers from Possessi. Yeah, definitely like the anchor man, even if it. Uh does get a little bit punished by the Scorpid, so do the other options, while the Anchorman does give him a way to uh, potentially draw cards and just corrupt the stage dive. As for Possessi, looking at cutting class even, just yeah, to same. draw him towards Rattlegore or Troublemaker sooner. It's just the only thing I think he cares about is hitting some kind of, uh, or just any of the three of two Troublemakers, one Rattlegore, and praying that that somehow gets there. For Bank Yugi, we could see this as a Rancor turn, if he just wants yeah. to bump and then get rid of the Scorpid that way. Rancor is really not that important in the matchup that you're fine using it on a single minion. I think he should just value the potential card draw from the Anchor Man a bit more. 100% agree. Even the Scorpid, it could be a nuisance. Uh, or maybe just do a little bit more than what it's currently doing. Uh, Axe coming down. I mean, the problem is now for Possessi that even if he does find uh, the big Rattlegore or the Troublemaker, there's no way to cheat it out with any kind of consistency because there's too many minions in the hand. So it'll just be playing it for its full mana cost, a concept that has become disgusting to me at this point in Hearthstone's life cycle. I never play full mana cost for my cards. Imagine. Well, stage dive available for Bank Yugi to tutor out the Kargath if he wants, which is of a size that doesn't just get immediately chewed up by the Outrider's Axe. I think it's the Axe that's discouraging just Scorpid this turn, but Bank Yugi says, that's all right. I am just going to feed Possessi another draw because he still has the tools to deal with most of the things Possessi can put forth this turn. Yeah, it's not a big deal as well, but Stage Dive is also a decent activator for Coerce if he ever wants to go for that um, in the near future. I, I don't think that's the main reason, but it's uh, some small upside to his play as well. You'll made it in swing. Very simple for Possessi. There's the okay. Rattle Gore now, so he doesn't necessarily need to go for Turbo Draw anymore, but... Um, after the rattle war comes down, he'll be interested in finding troublemakers at some point. So it's not as though the cutting class has become useless. Weird turn again for Bank Yuki. You don't really want to use the coerce on a uh, a single shield maiden here because again. Every copy of Coerce that he has here, we have to remember, Rattlegore is killable in the matchup, as we saw from Alu Temu yesterday. You don't just have to accept that it's going to hit you for infinite damage. And so saving all of these to get it down to even just a 6-6 in the next couple turns would make a big difference. 
it's worth, and that's why he's going for Kargath. Um, with the stage dive buff here, able to take down the shield maiden, you'd have to assume. Uh, although it does leave a target for the axe to keep drawing, but at this point, Possessi, like, he has enough cards that I feel like it's worth it to use the Kargath to clear something where Coerce is able to clear any minion, whereas the Kargath might not necessarily do the same later on. It, uh, it doesn't leave it anyway, right? Because it's uh, only plus oh, right. one. Sorry. Oh, so yeah, it just trades very cleanly. My bad. Scorpid into hopefully playable card or just Barov into Scorpid, all right? Yeah, I mean, you can go shield uh, Barov into Scorpid. Oh, I guess actually setting up for the play of getting rid of Barov and then next turn going Scorpid coin Shadow Hunter does get you double activation on the Scorpid, which is some small benefit. And it, of course, gets you uh, an extra 3 6 on the board. So this, I think, is good uh, rationing of his resources for the next few turns. Yeah, this is almost certainly better because um, even if he had gone for Scorpid this turn, it's not like it's helping him clear hand space to keep drawing with the Outrider's Axe. It is just going to generate another card there. And Kiki taking the draw, finally a minion that he can proc Frenzy on. Mm -hmm. Nitro Boost is not bad, right? With yeah. Outrider's Axe again, that's... Equal to a lot of damage. It's better than the others. Yeah. Definitely like the pick there. Um, not going to see use on this current weapon, you'd have to imagine, but the other Outrider's Axe is going to do quite a lot. And Van Kugi with the wins, sees that this happens to him two Warrior Mirrors in a row. He managed to get it done still last game, but he's working with less immediate resources than Possessi. Yeah, this is the one situation where Bank Yugi does not win this game. He could, of course, get it down to, um, I mean, not immediately, but like at least a 5-5 over the next couple of turns with his combination of Shield Slams, Barovs, Coerces, and Blade Furies, or Blade Storm, sorry. Um, but he's going to tank a bit of damage in the meanwhile. Blade Storm? That can deal with one piece of the rattle gore as long as it's isolated and that tends to happen at some point for sure <laughs> i think you just start chipping through it now right shield slam coerce it's gonna take a while but uh every journey starts with a single footstep little by little also bankyuki can just go for his own rattle gore next turn true Possessi now has Outrider's Axe to take down the Scorpid. Oh, yeah. I mean, Remember, I, he has to dump something after that. <laughs> I'm just shield slamming that, I think. Like, you go sure, uh, Nitro yeah. Boost plus Axe, and then you push all of this face. I want to go aggro. Yeah, I think that's much better. It solves his hand space issues, and it allows him to keep going with the cutting class. And honestly, it's kind of to the point where Bank Yugi can't go rattle gore next turn i mean he can obviously um but it's pretty threatening actually uh, and he may be more tempted to just go like bulwark uh coerce blade storm would actually quite uh, cleanly answer this board yeah definitely feels like it and speaking of bulwark it could be very useful for bank yugi here as yeah. well because not only is it activating his cores it's going to save him quite a bit of damage in the near future this is now clean right you can go bulwark coerce and then the blade storm deals with both the six six exactly. and the vulgin yeah yeah it's very clean uh the alternative being you could i guess go bulwark swing first i don't really see how that's better uh so yeah you may as well just get the use of it while you can here yeah, using up two charges is a little bit too valuable here. Oh, wow. wow. He's not gonna bleed storm at all? Really? That felt pretty good there. It did feel pretty good. It saves him one charge on the bulwark by virtue of deleting another minion. Yeah. Uh, and in terms of like saving with Barov, he has the other blade storm as well. So I'm surprised to see this. Yeah, and it's not like he has the mana free to do it next turn anyway, just because you kind of want to go Rattlecore at that point. And for Possessi, 
doesn't want to go Troublemaker because he doesn't want to feed Bank Yugi a good brawl, but it so happens that Troublemaker would have been insane in this situation. Ooh, shield? Whirlwind, whirlwind Shield? Yes. I, I'm sorry, maybe not right now, of course, because there's still the Bulwark in play, but it's damage, and that is what you need right now. Indeed. As he still on nine cards, not going to overdraw, but Ow. no harm in committing the card gath, I guess. It just puts another threat in his deck after it dies if there is a brawl. And there is no brawl. Yeah, and uh, again, he is such an underdog in the matchup. You just have to say, I pray he doesn't have the good answer. And he does not, once again. Uh, Barov plus Minefield or Bladestorm has to be uh, the priority here for Bank Yugi. I think right. that... The uh, Wrathful Gore is just way too scary. Do try to keep yourself and alive. both of those are pretty valuable resources because the Rattle Gore is now getting down to the size where Minefield can kill it off by itself. Uh, but Mana Expenditure tells you to go Bladestorm instead. I'm not sure. Yeah, I was looking at... Wow, okay, that's pretty good. Um, I was looking at going for Bladestorm, and then you could maybe even swing into the Rattlegore and then go Minefield, just because, again, when you have one charge left of uh, uh, Bulwark, it's very often correct to swing, uh, just because you gain an extra charge in terms of invulnerability. Man, I just don't think Bank Yugi's going to get there against all of this. Troublemaker or Kargath Prime, absolutely huge here. And the Divine Shield on the Rattle Gore is so problematic. Yeah, I mean, this would be, again, an absolutely monstrous upset if Possessi can get the win here and puts back Yugi in some real danger in this series. It truly does. Just go However, again? Um, with... Which... Troublemaker, like, develop loads of pressure onto the board. If they didn't have Brawl last turn, do they... Like, I think they represented they didn't have it. Well, they could still have it. I kind of like the Kargath better, right? Okay. It's still threatening lethal if he has one more weapon, although he has used both of the... Mm, Outrider's Axe. So Troublemaker does present two-turn lethal, whereas the Kargath is better against Brawl. I guess a wise man once said, if you can set up two-turn lethal, <laughs> you should do that. True words have never been said, oh, as Kargath off the top is a very big deal. Okay, how does this shake out? Because Bladestorm, Bladestorm doesn't quite get there right because of the Divine Shield, unfortunately. Um, because I was thinking you could go for a setup turn and then Kargath next turn. But maybe you just can't just have to go Kargath into the Troublemaker? Right, he just cannot afford to leave up the Troublemaker this turn because it's regenerating problems, and if he uses the Bladestorm this turn, or both of them, then he still can't get the 3-3s three dealt with, so I think he has to clear the Troublemaker. He is going to go up to 23, and then 25 with the Hero Power, and then all the way back down to 11 just on board, but... Uh, I just don't think he can afford to leave up the 3-3s. Three the Bladestorm setup is probably better killing the 6-8 first. Completely agree. And of course now this is left with a few options as to how he wants to go about clearing this. Obviously, Kargath Prime bumping into the other one is an option, but honestly, like 3-3 three, three and then bump in with the Bulwark is kind of what I'm looking at here instead uh, and save the Kargath back. You still have a lot of pressure. Pretty good. As long as he doesn't use the Divine Shield, I'm on board because he right. knows that this shield is what's preventing a very clean Bladestorm from Bank Yugi. After the Bulwark, all he does is armor up, which feels a little bit bad, but it's right. not worse than just wasting, essentially, the Kargath Prime, right? I mean, you could go bump one of the 3 threes in and then Minefield plus Kargath, because even though that loses the Divine Shield, it likely damages the other 3-3 three three as well, so it's not likely to give a super clean um, Bladestorm on the other side, but I think you just want to milk your resources better than that, and the Bulwark here, just as a, a Light Justice effectively, is a little bit more impressive. Even worse than Light Justice. Yeah, true. Oh, he has to face tank it! 
Mm. Oh yeah, the the three three, the three three. Yes, and then just blade storm, of course. I mean, it's what a four four that's left on the other side of the board. That's survivable again. This is definitely not over for Bank Yugi. Right, the armor vendor is actually pretty clutch. Gives yeah. him a bit more reach and something on the board to potentially damage the rattle gore. Question is whether he wants to fit in athletic studies rather than armor vendor, but I don't think there's any outcome that you won't have the mana to work with next turn if you just go for it next turn. Now the Kargath Prime. Yeah, it's starting to come to the end of its tether. Possessi, of course, has another troublemaker in the deck, which could give him the extra reach he needs, but Bank Yuki is you know, with one or two more good draws, the natural coerce left in his deck. Uh, oh no, sorry, all of those are gone, but any kind of removal option possible, he could be rounding the corner. It's so close. I'll tell you what he needs. The rabbit! That's what it is here, Derek. True! Athletic studies. Pent <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Trasher into Bladestorm? Yeah. Oh, uh... That doesn't clear now. No, it doesn't. I'm a bit lost. He can't it clear the Rattlegore completely ever. Even with double hit, so Bladestorm doesn't get there. If he attacks into the Kargath first, that doesn't get there. I mean... Even if he could clear, if it means attacking into the Kargath, that's nearly a death sentence, right? Because right. he can't deal with enough of the Rattlegore remaining death rattles. It kind of had to be the 10th Thrasher to give him a good Blade Storm and then only leave a 3 3 Rattlegore on the board. Yeah, I completely agree with you. That felt like the absolute wrong option. Okay, this gives him a Rancor, but he is He's just dead. barely dead. Gets to fit in the hero power, so not yet dead. But no, he's literally just dead, right? Oh no, the uh, it's a bulwark, sorry. Yeah. So it's two damage off it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Um. Doesn't change the fact that Bank Yugi is very likely dead next turn. Right. Oh, it's so close. It's so, so close. <sighs> How does he stay alive? The next draw is. Brawl, then best case situation is the Rattlegore survives and he still takes three damage. So he's alive, technically, on four. Oh, the Cthulhu piece. No! <laughs> he uh, can't go hard, crusty, and hero power. It's too sh It's a little oh, bit you're short. right. It's one mana short. Oh my goodness. So if he just goes. Does Nothing he have to go hero there. hero power swing to draw a card? That's the only out, right? Right, and then cards left for Bank Yugi include a uh, shield slam and a shield maiden. That's pretty big. Yeah, or Powers war cash also. into bulwark. Like there, there are okay. cards. There are some. There are cards. cards. But he has to tank the three in order to draw. Right. And that means he goes to one, and there will be, at the minimum, a 2-2 two -two on the board. Okay, so he's doing it this way first, where he... No? Okay. It's just... Looking for shields? Slam? Okay. Wait, no, it doesn't work. He has no armor after that. Right just... four. None left. Yeah. Oh. Literally at the end there, Bank Yugi was looking for some out that we couldn't think of. Even if he got exactly minefield, there would have been a 1-1 one, one Rattle Gore that would have dealt him the lethal. Maybe he was just trying to find a way to stay alive and preserve one more charge on his Outrider's Axe. But yeah. the real difference maker was not taking the Tent Trasher in order to kill off the um, Kargath Prime without having to face tank it. That could have been Bank Yugi's ticket to stay alive. Yeah, I mean, you hate to say it, but to be perfectly honest, it kind of felt like Bank Yugi was a little bit lost uh, in that series. It was not picking the Tent Trash and not playing the Blade Storm when he had a very clean clear right here, as we see on the clip, uh, against both the Vol'jin and the 
uh, Rattle Law itself. I think just a few instances that could have been improved upon, just in terms of preserving his health total. You don't have infinite health in this matchup, and you have to be very careful just to make sure that you are able to overcome their damage. And, uh, yeah, I mean, a huge win for Possessi, make no mistake, but far from the cleanest game from Bank Yugi, not up to his usual standard. Indeed. Um, that was quite possibly the worst possible pan out for Bank Yugi, to be fair. The earliest, uh, or a relatively early Rattle Gore into then one Troublemaker and the Kargath and the Prion coming off the back of just Nitro Boost Poison on the Outrider's Axe, just cosplaying as Weapon Warrior from back <laughs> in the day. Uh, however, this is not the end of the world for Bank Yugi because although his lineup is uh, I think it makes more sense in a conquest format if he's just trying to bully Control Warrior on the other side. If you do lose one counter Q, it's just so funny that Vankyugi is actually okay still in LHS because he has another deck that can still beat Control Warrior. Secret Librem Paladin, I think this is still pretty favored against Control Warrior because of just how much value you can get off of those repeated Librems of Wisdom. Yeah, I mean, I think arguably it's pretty favored against the entire lineup, actually, from Possessi. It's good against the Warrior, obviously, as we've seen. Pretty good against Demon Hunter, to be honest, just because, uh, you know, if you're not Alu Temu and you can't hit these insane one-mana Ilganoths on turn seven, uh, very often there's just too much pressure from the secret Librum Paladin. And then against the likes of Druid, it's not a terrible matchup either, to be perfectly honest. You've got a Librum of Justice for a board clear, in addition to, of course, plenty of early tempo, Oh My Yogs to disrupt the secrets. So for Bank Yugi here, if he's able to get the win against the Warrior, which once again, we do predict he will be likely to do so. Uh, this could be yet another instance of Librum Paladin sweeping his opponent. We've already seen it once this weekend uh, in the first series we had this weekend against Shaxi. Yeah, not impossible whatsoever. Although to be fair, yesterday when Bankyuki faced Alutamu, it felt like after game one, all of the favorable slash unfavorables went the other way than we expected. Right. <laughs> so it's just a good reminder of when we talk about how this is favored, it's unfavored. We never even go above like 60%. Even, I don't know about that last warrior mirror. Maybe that one goes above 60% for Bankyuki, but definitely not unwinnable for Possessi as we saw him put on a clinic on how to take a fringe win condition and ride it all the way to the bank. However, in terms of beating Librem Paladin, of course, early Rattlegore is still super powerful, but maybe that turbo-boosted weapon is not going to be quite so good against the taunts and the healing that Bank Yugi can put forward. Yeah, it's definitely a very, very difficult matchup. The win condition for Paladin, or sorry, for Librem Paladin against Control Decks has been drastically diminished, not from the most recent nerf, but from the nerf prior, where Penfling has stopped being able to go face. Uh, that was more of a win condition against Priest, I think, than against Warrior, uh, because I do still think that generally, if you're greedy with your Librems of Hope and Liadrins, and you go four Librems of Hope over the course of the game, that very possibly is enough to just win you the game on the spot. But uh, make no mistake, once you get to the late game, Librem Paladin is not quite the control killer that it once was when Penflingers would do like 40 damage over the course of a game if it went that long. Tell you what, though, Dara, I got a Sparkle quiz for you. Okay. Trades with Rattle Gore. <laughs> one minion. Uh, Rattle Gore? No, Pen Flinger! You can play oh. it literally infinite times on your <laughs> minions, at least. So it can get there. It can get there, in theory, against Rattle Gore. Obviously, probably not going to see that happen, but if the Rattle Gore gets down to around 5 health, 4 health, by some of Bank Yugi's other effects, then the Pen Flinger can actually take it all the way down to zero. That's true, in reference to the fact that Gia and I are so lame that in our uh, rehearsals before we go live, we do Hearthstone quizzes on the internet because that's just the kind of people we are. Not to mention countries of the world and immediately get pooped on by our producers who know everything about Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Curse you, Bosnia and Herzegovina. <laughs> I hope Indeed. no one from there is watching, Derek. You shouldn't curse yeah. entire countries. Of course, of course. Joking, joking. Just a, a difficult one to remember the full name of. Uh, but either way, jumping into the uh, series here, we see Bank Yugi off to a very juicy start. This is exactly the kind of hand that you are looking for. And it's exactly the kind of hand that you could argue Possessi is punished by for his mulligan because he did keep Rattle Gore. And it's a very aggressive start here from Bank Yugi. But I do still think that that was the correct play. Again, Possessi's entire deck 
deck does the same thing. It clears boards. Rattlegore is the outlier, so I like keeping that just because it's the one thing that does something different later on. Oh, and that is the dream draw off of the Knight of Anointment, the Hand of a Doll, to keep the minions of a size where Bladestorm is tough to get down and to keep the pressure going. This is absolutely premium for Bank Yugi. And I also want to note that the recent nerf to first day of school is actually probably a buff in this specific matchup. You get more mm. value. Um, instead of just two one-cost cards, and you're happy to give up the one mana in order to play that. Ooh, okay, that's a timely enough card to be drawn. Again, there aren't many secrets in the deck, and having drawn two of them already is a little rough, but just being able to, at some point, start uh, pulling them out of the deck is a very nice way to spend your mid-game turns. But obviously, before any of that comes down, Bank Yugi is just uh, piling on the pressure turn after turn and it's the kind of boards that are honestly difficult for warrior to deal with you don't want to brawl this especially uh so instead just going for a buffed cargo is good recognition from possessi that this will deal with most of the threat yeah great timing from possessi and i don't think bank yugi was wrong whatsoever to coin out the outdoor true seeker because yeah. you can get the early minion pressure in this matchup that's kind of just a premium on top of your late game win condition of liadrin and wisdoms of uh, Librams of Wisdom, plus the Pen Flingers. Ariel Rome, able to discount the Librum of Hope, is not a particularly big deal, I think. I'm more heavily looking at First Day plus Sword of the Fallen. Yeah, me too. Worth thinking about, but the curve is just smooth enough already. You don't need Cariel to help uh, you get there. And Psychic of additional value. Yeah, you're right. The Psychic Conjure is what I wanted to point out. It can get some decent hits from Possessi's yeah. deck. Uh, the dream would be either like another Rattlegore or Troublemaker, but even just a piece of removal that Possessi's not necessarily expecting can come in clutch. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, don't necessarily expect it to see it. Uh, sorry, expect to see it right now because uh, the Sun Gill and. Uh, Freshman? I don't even remember the name of that card. The 1-4 uh, is a little bit more immediate uh, utilization of your powerful one drops. Frazzled Freshman, I believe. Frazzled, indeed. Yes. Oh, Corsair Cat. Oh. Liberal Judgment? In. Yes, or the other Sword of the Fallen, which by next turn, I assume Bank Yugi's just going to swing, so there will be no more secrets in the deck. But it's still a card draw. <laughs> that is potentially getting him closer to Lady Liadrin. Sword nerf? What sword nerf? It's still got three durability where I'm from. <laughs> still worse than a light's justice. Objectively true. <laughs> uh, Armorsmith Shield Slam again tempting at this point, but it's that constant balance you have to strike as warrior where you don't want to remove every minion the turn it comes down because you will run out of removal you have to let your opponent build up uh, and go for a bigger brawl if you want to be able to clear off all their threats but do you think this four damage chip every turn is just too much i do think so the problem is like he can also have to, or he does have to worry a little bit also about what the secret is. Omayog oh is right. the pull for Bank Yugi and also the most likely one from Possessi's perspective. And maybe he wanted to get the mana spent on the weapon for now and then next turn test Omayog oh with, say, Corsair Cash and be able to whirlwind down the 4 4. Eight, 8. Eight, eight. Oh yeah. No messing about here. Healing the minion as, as well. Again, just uh, slight optimization as your own health does not especially matter. And even that uh, Northwatch Commander is just a good top deck in all honesty for Bank okay. Yugi. Uh, being able to get him that little bit closer to Lady Liadrin, as you said. Um, and just keeping the, pre uh, the pressure and the threats rolling. This is looking tough for Possessi to effectively answer because... I mean, realistically, this turn, what does he do? Uh, Whirlwind, Armor Vendor, Double Shield Slam is like every good removal piece in his hand gone. Yeah, and there's still the Oh My Yog to worry about. Right. Honestly, the timing from Bank Yugi is so good here. This is the turn before the Sun Gill goes off, which means that he's playing this into a turn where Brawl is super awkward. And if Possessi doesn't remove it next turn, then Bank Yugi doesn't have to worry about Brawl because he's probably already won with the damage of the 8 8. And so. Whirlwind probably still possesses Beck's option, even if there's Omayog, he can then go minefield with the 
armor vendor sure. and hero power and shield slam and most of the time that deals with things. Oh, he's also just overloaded now. Oh. He hits his own face! Oh. <laughs> Absolute okay. disaster. Going with the brawl now. He needs this 8 8 to die. Okay. Wow, huge outcome for Possessi. You don't take that type of risk unless you're in a very, very bad situation, and that is exactly what Possessi was facing down. So I respect it. Uh, never mind, Armor Vendor is like Armor Smith. She always wins the brawl. <laughs> Indeed. Lady Liadrin off the top as well, though. I don't think it's time quite yet. You want to play the Librum of uh, uh, Wisdom, sorry, a few more times, but it just absolutely guarantees that Bank Yugi's threats will not stop. Mm. The Corsair Cash also becomes interesting now because he can potentially pick up Librum of Judgment, even if it's mm. not uh, corrupted. I think it's very good for Bank yes, Yugi here. He just wants to get a little bit more damage snuck through every single turn. He's going to favor the card draw, though, which is still very reasonable. Still, he has just seen a brawl, so the wide board does have its value as well. I mean, there's just so many cards that you want to play here. Like, every combination of mana that Bank Yugi can spend here is really powerful. Uh, misses on the Judgment, which is, of course, a big deal, deleting quite a lot of attack, actually, uh, as I think Librum of Judgment would have just been the death knell for Possessi. Uh, but he gets to keep fighting on here if he can find an answer to this board. Thank Yugi going with the Reckoning here. Probably gets... Nothing significant done in the matchup, but it does force Possessi to test for second Oh My Yog. Exactly. Two mana spent. Gonna go for Minefield, and then I'd have to imagine... Uh, oh, that's such a disaster! <laughs> that is a disaster. You're not incorrect. Oh, are there three One Health minions on board, and two of them go on his own 1-3? One, <laughs> I don't get it. Possessi had very bad luck with the Omayog, and then very good luck with the Brawl, and then bad luck again. I think it's net negative by a mile here. Definitely agree with you on that one. Uh, I mean, the, again, the Liberal of Judgment would almost just be straight up lethal here uh, for Bank Yugi. So instead he has to make do with, I mean, what is still a decent turn in the end, probably looking at... Um, Aldor Truthseeker, I guess, and then Librum play it down. Although Talon arguably has its benefits with uh, it having Divine Shield. Although the best thing Talon draws at this point is just Samuro, which Bank Yugi really doesn't. Sure. I just want Bank Yugi to equip the Sword of the Fallen as a Light's Justice and keep <laughs> him start swinging. Because he's threatening oh, lethal with the Lady Liadrin being to generate how many Librams of Hope now and then Hand of a Doll. Move quickly. Next turn. Uh, I couldn't tell you exactly how many, but it feels like three or four. It's not truly absurd numbers yet. Wait, guess he's going to go for it right yeah. now. Push a bit more damage. Has the Omayog oh equipped. Oh, wow. Only two. Still tons of pressure. Possessi oh, yeah. has had no time to get the Rattle Gore down, which means we're not going to see Penflinger go into it a million times. I'm sad. <laughs> hmm. And now there's possibilities for a good blade storm. Is there any way you can manipulate it here? If you go, again, it's the Oh My Yog in the way, but like Hero Power Shield Slam on the Liadrin and then swing into the 3-3 three, three gives you a full clear. Uh, you have to find some way to proc first, though, which maybe comes off the swing or the Scorpid. Yeah, not seeing it. Okay. Ooh. So now he can... Shield slam first uh, because he knows this is Omayog oh into then Bladestorm Rancor, which only heals him for two armor, but it clears the board. Bladestorm oh, Rancor. Knows this is Rancor. Uh, sorry, um, Omayog oh plus. That was an error. Oh. Yeah, I mean, oh he doesn't have plus mana reckoning to go. for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. He doesn't have the mana to go Bladestorm plus Rancor anymore, though. Uh, so he's just yeah. praying that it hits the one good minion. It does not. Uh, and now even Rancor on its own. It's going to have to be the Bulwark to keep him alive instead. Shield slam. Yeah. Okay. I think Possessi may have miscounted his mana on being able to fit in the hero power with the shield slam. But that is as simple as that. I don't know what Mankyugi's waiting for. 
Wait, how it best to BM you? It doesn't have lethal, right? It's the oh, bulwark in play, so it's not over yet. Again, the pen flinger cannot get the job done, right? My bad, my bad. Okay. It's totally fine, though. Oh, yeah. I Even mean, he's, he's still winning. Hero power <laughs> <laughs> Make no mistake. Just because he isn't winning this turn uh, doesn't mean he isn't winning overall. But it gives one turn to possess you. Maybe he can piece some kind of a miracle together. It would have to involve this Rancor for sure. Yeah. Uh, Shield Slam still active, of course. Uh, so if you start with the Blade Storm, you kill off two of the minions. Uh, and then I guess Shield Slam Rancor does keep you alive. <laughs> yeah, heal for four. You Is can't. There a better way to do this. Yeah, I mean, realistically, you can't go Shadow Hunter Bulgin on Liadrin, even though it would be really nice to send that back and try and get Rancor on something smaller like a Penflinger. I guess he's just going Shield Maiden, Shield Slam instead, and then save yep. the Rancor. Probably Gives him better. some measure of board presence, sure. All right, still not over. No minions on the board to put these buffs on. Uh, obviously, plenty of ways to get a board on this turn and, of course, clear up the uh, Shield Maiden at the same time. But it's not there yet. Possessi still with a wing and a prayer to try and take down, again, another super unfavorable matchup. And he could use this Vol'jin, actually, on Possessi's... Or sorry, Bank Yugi's super buffed minion, but Bank right. Yugi smartly not investing all of the Librams into the same minion, I think. He's put a lot of them on the same minion, though. These are gone. Yeah. They are. Oh, he uses all of them. Okay. Wow. So now, Vol'jin trade... Tr wait, trade Rancor Vol'jin? Trade, yep, that's probably better than... You, of course, have to be afraid of what's coming out. Right. But maybe it's trade Vol'jin, then Rancor? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, from Possessi's perspective, the only minions left possible are Talon, Penflinger, Scorpid, and Samuro, and... Oh. There's quite a few. Uh, but if it's Penflinger, you're very happy about the, the Rancor. Yeah, I mean, the pen fling was much, much, much better uh, to pull out there from Possessi. He probably doesn't know how close he was to a very, very good outcome. I believe this is still so close. It's not over. Thank you, he only gets one Librum back from this Aldor Truth Seeker. No. That might have been I've, quite I've... the oversight, investing so many into one minion. Yeah, it does mean that just a top deck of Librum of Judgment, I believe, is exact lethal because you could buff it by one and then swing for five, but he doesn't find it here. Um, so again, you're just going to have to play your Ancient Guardian, uh, push as much damage face as possible, and hope that it gets there this time. Yeah, that's pretty fine still. He can it's also good. just buff his Talon to not die straight up to the 3-4. I don't think there's any reason to trade it by this point. Oh, no, yeah. Okay, I guess he's just gonna Librum of Justice, sure. Hey, loser. Are you that confident that Troublemaker doesn't represent any kind of a threat for you? I suppose you're pretty far in the lead. Yeah, this doesn't do any. Uh, Troublemaker doesn't do anything against this. It's really just like, what? <sighs> That's a clear. Is it? Is it? Wait. It's not, oh, right? Oh, it's not. Sorry, sorry, yeah. The Barov will not die. <laughs> oh. That's so unfortunate. You can't kill your Barov. That is a, a top five Barov moment. <laughs> Barov. That's just it. I don't think there's any way out. He can go... Bladestorm, then Barov, that doesn't matter. Barov, then Bladestorm, Troublemaker, even with the perfect outcomes, don't keep him alive. It's it's just locked. Not seeing it. If the Bladestorm worked like Defile, then maybe. <laughs> but not in this world. 
Ah, oh, unfortunate for Possess. He put up a very, very good fight. But in the end, Bank Yugi, in this instance, does get the expected outcome. Much more, uh, I think, clean play on the Paladin. Loading up all those Librams onto the one Ancient Guardian, I think, was maybe a little bit uh, throwing caution to the wind. Because, uh, again, he was very, very favored. But you don't want to give any opportunity back into the game for your opponent. Uh, so maybe keeping a closer eye out for Vol'jin. Uh, but the Paladin getting a win, again, absolutely massive deal. Because Possessi's best counter to this is probably the Druid, I would have to argue. I don't think you want to lo uh, lead up with the OTK Demon Hunter uh, into this Paladin. I don't know. Both matchups seem pretty difficult, but yeah, I agree the Druid probably has a bit more capability to just high roll, and sometimes they don't hit the Oh My Yog, and sometimes they don't get the early minion starts that kind of punish you waiting to get the Glowfly Swarm board down. But that's really not the end of Possessi's problems. This is only Bankyugi's second deck. There's still the Mage waiting in the wings there. So for Possessi, it is going to be the Token Druid. And on the flip side, if he does manage to take the win here, he is then very favored to win the series because the Token Druid is quite favored against Mage. Yep, quite favoured against Mage, and as the uh, remaining deck it would be... I can, oh no, sorry, the Warrior's out of the way, so yeah, right you are, just the uh, the Mage left over, so it's going to be a close one. And like you said, whoever wins here is looking to be in a very, very good position. So we're looking for the big draws from Possessi. Uh, I've been less impressed with the Token Druid play this week than last week. Not necessarily through any decisions that have been made correctly or incorrectly, just because it's not Blitzchung and nobody does it quite like him. <laughs> uh, but Possessi, of course, still, if he is able to get down that early Glowfly that seems to have been eluding a lot of our Token players, uh, will be able to still hopefully sail through with the victory. Right, and we do see that the Paladin has had historically a pretty good matchup against the Token Druid, not only because they are able to get down these early one drops and buff them to a point where they can start value trading with the minions that Possessi puts forth. The Oh My Hog is forever such a pain for Token Druid to deal with. The timing of that, whether it's to deny fungal fortunes or Glowfly Swarm itself, can be such a backbreaker because that one turn that the Druid needs to take off before the board that they develop, the Paladin can then put forward so many more stats and threaten counter lethal. Right, you are, Gia. It's a, a close matchup, and again, it's in a way, I guess, similar to the Rogue matchup against Druid, where you're trying to develop uh, proactively and then remove a little bit afterwards. But of course, there's less removal in the Paladin deck. It's much more focused on just getting that early development. Uh, and similar to the Neophytes that disrupt secrets, they instead have Oh My Yog, which, while less potent, is still uh, a bit of a difficult card to... Uh, avoid or correctly play around, I should say, for the token druid. Um, so it's going to be a very, very interesting game, a very important game for both of our players, because I believe uh, the stat was that if Bank Yugi or Glory win this weekend, then they would overtake Alutemu. I don't think anyone can overtake Blitzchung quite yet after his very strong two weeks in a row and then uh, getting through to the quarterfinals this week. Um, but Bank Yugi can get himself up into second place, I believe, if he goes all the way. Possessi, on the other hand, though, has has, uh, I think, a little bit more immediate need to do well. He is avoiding that relegation zone. He's creeping up into the top half of players now to try and get to the playoff spot. But it's definitely not out of the possibility that he is still relegated. So a win here going through to the semi-finals, or sorry, through to the finals, and guaranteed at least second place would be huge. And looking at the opening hand for Bank Yugi, the two cards in the middle have a lot of utility against Token Ooh. Druid. I'm not necessarily sure if Yog is a keep. Definitely feels a bit more enticing on the coin because then the Druid won't have the coin to potentially test for Oh My Yog, but you'd much rather get it off the Sword of the Fallen. So I could see that being tossed, but the Samuro, I think, is an instant keep in this matchup. I've got to be honest, I was kind of looking at just solo keep Hand of Adal and mulligan everything else. Because, really? <laughs> well, there's two ways you can go about it, right? Because you have to remember, Blade Master Samuro obviously is like your one board sweep in the deck. It's a very, very good card. But if you can't buff it straight away, it's like turn five, realistically, before you can go uh, Samuro, Coin, Hand of Adal, unless you get a cheap Librum of Wisdom as well. Right. So it's not always an insta-win card when you play it. Whereas if you go one drop into Hand of Adal, like, my thought process was maybe you can just get far enough ahead on board at the start. Um, but 
Even having said that, with uh, first day at school having been nerfed, your likelihood of getting a one drop is a lot lower. Uh, so maybe going for the reactive game plan does have a bit more merit. Yeah, I definitely look at Samuro in combination with strictly the Librims of Wisdom and not okay. the Hand of a Doll. And so if we're talking one drops you want, it's pretty much just the Aldor Attendant with the nerf to um, first day of school that will stick for Hand of a Doll to be able to then buff it. So I like Van Kugi's Mulligan. Like, the hand is only good if you get the one drop, and then the one drop makes Samuro good because of the discount to Librim of Wisdom. So for Possessi yeah. here, your opponent just played a secret from their hand. So it's one that they clearly want to spend mana on on this turn. Uh, like, you don't know that it's Oh My Yog, but 50% of the secrets are Oh My Yog anyway. So I'm kind of tempted to just go Power of the Wild. Like, your first instinct is to say Lightning Bloom because you can still get the Fungal Fortunes down. But you don't need to play Fungal Fortunes this turn. You can just play it next turn. And if you hit Guess the Weight to keep the card draw rolling anyway, you missed the second option, I think, there. But whatever. That was still an insane outcome off of the Yogg. Okay. I like the power of the wild, but that outcome is so nuts. That's like strictly better than playing a 3-2 there, yeah. I think, Possessi. <laughs> if he had to guess the weight there, and even if he knew that wasn't Oh My Yog and for some reason didn't want to play Fungal Fortunes, that straight up would have been a decent play. And now for Bank Yugi, just playing a spider tank is the best he's got. To be fair, this Glowfly isn't super impressive, but it yeah. will be next turn. Oh, it's going to be close, though. Bank Yugi has Coin Truth Seeker to set up for, as you were saying, Samuro Librum of Wisdom. His game plan of buffing it up has come together. But will a two-attack Samuro even be enough? Look at this hand. You're looking at Gibbling Coin, uh, Lightning Bloom, Solar, Pride Fury. I don't even know. There's like a million buff cards you can play. And I don't know if Bank Yugi's got the, uh, the power to keep up against it. Depends, right? Possessi could just go for Glowfly next turn because he says if it's not exactly Samuro, this board is pretty strong, and then you still have Gibberling to follow up. And then Bank Yugi can get that huge swing. If he starts Gibberling and Bank Yugi somehow deals with the majority of it, then the Glowfly is not as good. So it really depends on what Possessi sees as the better play. And it's Glowfly here! Bank Yugi is gonna be very happy about that. He can trade away his 2 2. Actually, we saw the same situation where he didn't yeah, immediately yeah. commit the um, Librum, and he could have had one more 1-1 one, one on board, but the upside is it's, like, one more Librum in the pool, and if it's not Glowfly, it's potentially one more damage to the face. I do think he has to Samuro this, so it's too good. Mm. Yep, you look at Librum of Justice, but even then, you kind of want to save that for when the big uh, Pride's Fury turn does come down, because even though this is the turn from Bank Yugi, this is what you and he were both anticipating when you kept the Samuro, and it is backbreaking. It's very, very bad for Possessi. It's not over. It is far from over, because he has an absolutely bananas turn here, with Gibblings, uh, Pride's Fury, oh. maybe even now just Solar Arbor instead. This is ridiculous. Okay, he has nine mana to work with, effectively. So eight mana for buffs after the gibberling. Yes, start gibberling and then you think. <laughs> so with the eight mana, he can go Pride's plus Soul of the Forest and still be like n not overloaded enough to not be able to go Arbor up. But then you're not really getting a good use out of the Solar Eclipse. If you go Solar with the... What? Pride's Fury, it's very strong, but it's still the same punish, which is Librum of Justice. I think you just go Bloom Solar Arbor. You end up with three Gibblings, all of which get buffed, and then the four Arbor Up uh, Treants as well. Um, you know, you you could argue, actually, again, having said that, maybe it is just better to go Solar because, uh, sorry, it's better to go Soul of the Forest because if your board sticks, then you can go for a massive Arbor Up turn anyway. And this gives right. you more survivability. That's what my thinking is. Like the the solar feels very uh, soul of the forest feels very important this turn in order to give him some way to fight back against wow. um, Librum of Justice. Possess he's going with your first instinct though, which to be fair, if there is no Librum of Justice, he is in a very favorite spot. And the Librum isn't the end of the world. Uh, Bank Yugi only got, oh, get oh. in there. I was gonna say just four minions, but this penfling are off the top. Oh. Hello. That's so insane. The fact that you can get the Librum of Hope back and keep constantly activating it. That was 
a ridiculous top sec there. Penflinger to the rescue. Oh my goodness. Still insane, it turns out. So Benkyugi can now put the Samuro in the 6-1 just to get the spell back in his hand. You want to take value trades, but you'd rather get Penflinger oh, yeah. down again. So it's completely worth it. Mm. <laughs> yes, Benkyugi, it's completely worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, at the end of yeah. it, he can only take actually two more VTs, right? Because he can then put the Librum on the 3 4, which can then trade exactly. over a 4 1. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it could trade over a 4 1, or you could get the Librum back again and play Penflinger one more time. Is that better? That's true. Definitely worth thinking about because he really wants to just Librum of Hope next turn. Potentially just better. Wow. He's not oh, even wow. for a replay. Okay. Interesting. So he gets one VT with the Samuro. The North Watch probably would have died either way here. Is this is still fine. Ooh. I mean, it's fine, but Possessi now gets with a board still intact another Gibbling, Nature Studies, and I was gonna say Soul of the Forest, but maybe you even just go Pride's Fury. That might be strong enough to just push for the win. Yeah, Derek, when I say this is fine, I mean it in the burning room, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, adorable into Pride Fury or Soul? The Prides doesn't even necessarily feel that good this turn because he doesn't get to get a VT yeah. over the 6-3. However, he has just seen a Librum of Justice, so it's very powerful still. Another <laughs> Prides! I don't even know if that's better. Maybe it's just Pounce to get another activation right now. The Pounce is not bad as well, actually. Well, he still got Adorable, right? So it's still a full board. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess. It was more just like taking out the Samuro, to be honest. Um, but either way, this is still super, super powerful, of course. Yep. It's going to start with Soul instead of the Prides. This is fine. It beats even the second Librum of uh, Justice. Probably just better, strictly, to Prides Fury next turn because he's then able to play double Prides. And, I mean, if we want to be fair to Bank Yugi, or a generous, I will say, rather than fair to Bank Yugi, um, even if he had gone for a more full board clear on that turn, there would still have been a huge amount of development this turn. It would have been all the cards except the two Treants on the left right now. Uh, that's still very, very scary. But that's the kind of board that maybe you can deal with, with all these pen flingers, Librams of Hope. This looks a lot, lot harder to try and chew through. Be fair, though, Bank Yugi going straight away for the Justice says, I've seen one Arbor up, so even if you have double Pride Fury, things do not trade well into my 9-9 nine -nine taunt. Uh, however, Possessi's now picked up Lunar Eclipse, which is huge here. Let's him go Lunar into double Pride Fury and be able to push some face damage. Like, he'll lose a couple minions, but it is no big deal. Yeah, it's really just figuring out how much uh, you can get away with in terms of buffing treants as opposed to whether you need the immediate attack now uh, just to take out the 9-9. Nine -nine. Hmm. So Pride's Fury times two will put two of his guys to four attack, two of them to three attack. And with the Lunar Eclipse, the two three attacks can go in and then he gets to push, uh, what, 11 damage to the face? Five that seems worth no it. One. I don't see a reason for holding on to Pride's at this point because he does have wow. just... Like, he's seen one Librum of Justice, and he also still has Soul of the Forest on two... I guess it's just two more minions by that point, but it still felt very strong. Yeah, I think what this allows him to do is buff all Treants rather than having to buff the minions beforehand. I don't know, that, that did feel a little bit weird. Um, yeah. As I think uh, he probably even missed, like, hero power at the end there, yeah. I think he missed a uh, more Soul attack, and... I mean, he missed a bunch. Yeah. Micro wise, or sorry, macro wise, Possessi has stuck more stats on board compared to my play, but it in less immediate face damage. And yeah. both definitely have their ups and downs. Consecrate Conk? is not that great. Uh, I'm looking at another Librum of Wisdom because of the pen flinger, but I don't know. You can't get the Librums rolling one after the other. I mean, if neither of these are good enough, do you have to go snack run to try and find Librum of Hope uh, again to just put more taunt in the way or Librum of 
justice uh, to try and clear the board. I don't know, because neither of those really feels like it yeah. did much of anything. It, yeah, fair enough. Okay, wave. That's uh, survivability, and it's pretty good with the Scorpid. You take it! He just needs to live, and then hit the other liver. Okay, it's not just living, obviously. The board needs to be dealt with at some point, but he's hoping to draw the other Librum of Justice at some point. Okay. Oh my god, honestly, I don't even know what's happening anymore. Like, <laughs> I feel like both players are just kind of playing cards at this point and hoping that it's enough to kill their opponent. This has gotten very messy. It, it truly has. Okay, six on board for Possessi. He can turn it to 12. Not nearly enough to get lethal. Yeah, I mean, you just push everything to the dome and then hope you get there. You stop thinking at this point now. <laughs> Professional advice from Derek. Just stop thinking. I mean, it didn't work out for him last time. He roped out because of all that thinking. If he just played cards, it would have gone better. Oh my god. <laughs> I hate that that's right, but... <laughs> Okay, not over. Second Librum of Justice slash Librum of Hope. Yeah. Uh, that's not it. That is not draw, it. He can draw with the North Watch Commander if he starts with Omayog, because the Pendlinger is doing a whole load of nothing against a board of this size. Uh, yeah, that doesn't do anything. Uh, Crimson Sigil Runner uh, cannot get into the outcast position. So just going for Oh My Yog. He can obviously buff up his minions a whole bunch um, in order to try and take value trades that way. But even then, we can see it just doesn't matter. Because, the, I mean, the poisonous uh, Lyca gets it done anyway, right? And the other minion is only enough to take, at best, four damage off the board. But I don't even think you can get there. What a game, Derek. What a game. What a game indeed. Possessy with... I mean, honestly, one of the best hands it's possible to get because not only did he have the Glowfly, he had two very strong follow-up turns with both of the Jibblings afterwards. And uh, honestly, if he hadn't had such an absolutely insanely strong uh, starting hand, maybe there was some opportunity for Bank Yugi to crawl his way back in. Um, but after a messy couple of turns from both sides, it does mean that Possessi is able to get over the finish line. And it's one game away now from going to the finals. He just needs to get a win against uh, the one final remaining deck from Bank Yugi, which is the Mage, the Spell Mage, the almost across the board. Uh, well, I won't say across the board, but at least in terms of the players who made it to the top eight, uh, Spell Mage has been massively moved away from. Uh, players thinking that maybe the nerfs are too impactful, or maybe just the field they expected in Last Hero Standing didn't suit it. Uh, but he's definitely going to have a tough battle against this Token Druid again from Possessi. It's true. Man, I just want to go back and watch so many different turns from this game. Thankfully, we have this replay feature now, but really the one turn where it started to go wrong on both sides, I think, was when Bank Yugi went for not getting more pen flinger procs and left up, what was it, a, a 5-1 and a 4-1 on yeah. the other side of the board, where I think he could have had minimum one minion remain, or at least maybe even a full board clear if he had gotten more procs from the pen flinger. And that could have made a big difference because Possessi had to rebuild the board and then immediately take some pretty good trades after that. But then Possessi, with the um, turn where he roped out, missed some damage, didn't matter in the long run. I think his macro game plan was still better than what I was suggesting overall of pushing more damage. But you just don't want to see things like that, you know, being stressed out and not being able to complete the turn can be disastrous. And you do have to build very intricate boards like that, once again, versus Spell Mage, because they do run Shooting Star in this list. And there's also Deck of Lunacy, which I'm not really sure the best way to play around the type of AoE that that's generated from it. But in the world where they don't hit Lunacy, you have to be very careful as the token druid not to be too weak to devolving and also not too weak to combustion. Yeah, I've got a helpful tip for how to play around AoE from Deck of Lunacy. Uh, don't. It's where another <laughs> instance of my good friend not thinking comes into play because there's just too many different types of removal that it could be. And I think, as always, the best option as Token Druid is just to focus on your own game plan, put these big boards down, and pray that your opponent doesn't have the AoE to clear. Uh, because, again, Deck of Lunacy is a very, very valid route to go in this matchup. We saw, again, uh, it already comes back to me, Chonsu uh, was on the receiving end of Deck of Lunacy into 
exactly cycle of hatred uh, at the receiving end of Virtuos, who was playing the mage against the token druid. Like, you can just instantly win the game if you draw it, but at the same time, you can draw your commencements and deck of chaos and do absolutely nothing with it. Very, very difficult matchup to predict with a lot of variance. But for Possessi, it's a lot more straightforward on the Druid. We are once again looking for those big early glow flies, card draw, jibblings, the goods. These are not the goods. But for Bang Yugi, this mulligan is super interesting because you look at Primordial, the spell damage minion is pretty good against Token Druid, particularly Mini Mage, and then you have Cram Session to follow it up. But then you probably can't afford to also keep fun of power because it's just conflicting with those early turns, right? You have to choose one route. And all of these cards, importantly, are not in Cantor's flow. Is it worth keeping right. any of them? I would look at either just studies or just fun of power in this situation. There's no consideration to studies plus cram session. Like, you're drawing more cards at that point, even if it means you'd have to delay on actually hit playing the... Uh the Encanter's Flow? It's certainly worth thinking about, right? But the the reasoning behind Cram Session, I think, is a little bit too weak. If it's prior to Encanter's Flow, a lot of the time, you're not even going to be able to play those cards in this matchup if right. they're not discounted. For Bank Yugi, however, he just wants none of it, only the flow. And you know what? This hand already looks better than anything I was talking about a while ago. <laughs> And I'm kind of looking at just coining it out. Like, if you go and can coin and counter slow into Rune Dorb, uh, if you hit AI, obviously, is the dream. Uh, another encounters flow, even just a cram session to cycle off of the uh, Rune Dorb, in addition to obviously all the removal spells that can be good against Token Druid. I think it's a decent way to spend your mana. Yeah, absolutely. There's some argument to holding on to coin now that Refreshing Spring Water is a bit more expensive and you can get that down a turn earlier. But I'd much rather, um, from Bank Yugi's perspective, assume that he's going to draw something to do by the time turn three comes around or have generated it from the Ruined Orb. And uh, Lunacy followed by Double Spring Water? That's pretty good, right? Oh, I mean, I was going to say I think you just settle on Netherwind Portal. But now you phrase it like that, it is pretty good, isn't it? As long as you're not just dead on turn four, which is unlikely, sure, I'm on board. He's playing this card. So there's definitely some, like, he. it means that Bank Yugi is of the school of thought that Lunacy can win this matchup. Makes sense that he takes it because if he had drawn this card naturally, I think he would be going for that game plan as well. <laughs> it's wow. very slow for Bank Yugi. Very, very slow. But of course, it is waiting to power up, as both of these oh. players are. This is nothing, nothing, nothing. But Possessi just hit the card, the one thing that Bank Yugi cannot just go Deck of Lunacy into. Because if he does, he is almost literally just dead the turn after. This is the punish for his line. But he still has the Lunacy, I think. Agreed. Uh, yeah, even Arbor Up, you're not actually dead. You're at like 20, you're at three health or something at that point, uh, or very, very low. And then you just hope that Refreshing Spring Water pulls you out. Yep. You go to five, which is right. you know, fine if you're able to clear the board the turn after. That's just oh the way goodness. this matchup works. And he'll have three draws minimum to work with. <laughs> well, this is where we're at, Derek. Possessi's <laughs> one game plan is to say, tree, 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 and then Bank Yugi says, deck, 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 and <laughs> we'll see who wins. Water, water, water. Yeah. Okay, uh, one of them clearable. Not bad. Uh, With the devolving missiles and a hex. It's close. The but missiles I don't are think pretty it's close likely enough. to hit three different ones. Right. And rush into those one ones. Oh, maybe. You can get rid of one, you can hex the other. No, it still leaves two oh. four threes, right? And he hit a bad outcome as well. Do you? Yeah, it still just leaves two four threes. I don't see an avenue out. You can go for Apexis into Earth Ellie. Does that get uh, there? Uh, uh, you're still dead. He is still dead, yes. Thank you, going to give it his most valiant efforts. 
but in a very APAC fashion, game four ends <laughs> in the blink of an eye. <laughs> yeah, deck versus tree, but in the end, Possessi is able to get the win over him with, uh, you know, not the most difficult of games, but still nicely executed. And Bank Yugi, again, as I always say, very, very um, respectful in uh, victory and in loss as well as he uh, is uh, happy, I think, just to have had a good game against Possessi. And like we were saying, still walking away with uh, three points at the end of this, even if he wasn't able to get all the way up to four or five for second or first. Still a good week for Bank Yugi and puts him still at that strong point where he's very much looking at playoffs potential. But we do now have Gia, our finals set after Possessi was able to take the win there against Bank Yugi. Uh, and it's going to be one heck of a finals for us here in the APAC region. That's right. We've got Don versus Possessi. And although at the beginning of the day and even as early as yesterday, we were tagging Bank Yugi as the possible player to take down this very cool lineup from our three Japanese players, that narrative has been completely thrown out the window. It's Don who has the pen potential to be farming these lineups. 